Um, first of all, the energy that I'm picking up in your uh, love sector, uh, we have two people that I'm seeing here. Uh, the first could potentially be an air sign. So this is an Aquarius, a Gemini, and a Libra. And let me talk about this person first. Their energy is very directed. They're getting things done and they're kind of like clearing up the air. They're trying to clear up their life. They're waiting for the dust to settle in their life. Okay, so air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, Sun, Moon arising as the Knight of Swords. This is someone who rushes in very, very quickly and they want to communicate with you. And I feel like they want to build a relationship. Okay, so I'm sensing that this person has been through a very, very turbulent time in, in the history and the course of the relationship with you. So this is somebody you've had a lot of dealings with. You've had a, a lot of tumultuousness with. And I feel like it's somebody that you've known for quite some time. And for whatever reason, the alignment between the two of you, um, things were just, um, things had difficulties getting off the ground. But I do see a very strong karmic bond with this person. And I also feel like this is somebody that has grown up significantly from the time that they met you to the time uh, to the present day when you're still dealing with them. I feel like they're ready. They're finally ready for a commitment, finally ready for a relationship. And they're going to make that known to you. And I also feel there is this cycle of breaking up and making up between you and this person. And it shows up here as the Hierophant, which is stability, and then the Ten of Swords, which is separation. So I feel like there is a cycle here that has been repeating over and over and over again. And I feel like at this point, they are finally ready to kind of uh, move things forward with you. And they're going to make their intentions very clear and very they're going to be very vocal about what their intentions are towards you and towards uh, building a relationship with you. So overall, it looks really good in that department. The Ten of Swords indicates to me that there were uh, um, periods of communication and exchanges between the two of you where harsh words have been said. It's like too much has been said. Uh, we know too much about each other. We know way too much how to push one another's buttons. So this is an extensive dealing that you've had with this person. And so I feel like there is some, an opportunity here for things to come back around because they're coming back into the picture and they really do want to make a commitment with you. They're at a point where they're ready. And then I also feel there's another person that you're dealing with, uh, not concurrently, but for others of you, there's another person in the picture here. Your energy showing up for this week is, um, you're seen as a little bit of a heartbreaker. Okay. Um, this is like going through relationships and going through relationship patterns and attracting the same types of people and, um, not really looking at the viability of that person, but more like your emotional responses to the person. And as a result of it, it's a cycle of uh, bad relationships. And I feel like for some of you, you might not mind this so much because if you feel strongly for a person, you're going to go for it regardless of whether or not they are appropriate for you. Other people can see you and especially, you know, your crush, your love interest, they see you as someone who is a little bit flirtatious. And so they're not really making their intentions to move forward with you. And they're not really making um, any solid plans with you because they might feel like you're not 100% committed to them. So if you have someone that you're interested in, make sure your attention is undivided and make sure that they know you can be faithful and trustworthy and, you know, try to emphasize more of your um, commitment traits so that they can move forward with you. The person that you're dealing with shows up here as the hangman. This is somebody that is trying to reach out to you. And because of this flirtatious energy, they feel like your attention, your commitment is elsewhere. And they're not really trusting in this type of a partnership or this type of a relationship. Like they're not really sure uh, if you are the right person for them. And they're not really sure if they want to move forward with it because they see you as someone who has a lot of suitors who might be a little bit of a heartbreaker and they don't really want to get hurt. So they're at a point in their lives where they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. They're not really sure how to approach you. Um, if there has been exchanges in communication, I feel almost like they're not really available. 
I see you as well uh, thinking about somebody from your past who might already be in a committed relationship right now. They're not happy about it. They're not happy in their current relationship. And they could potentially be checking you out on social media. They could be thinking about you. But they're not able to make the move towards you because I feel like, you know, they're faithful. Um, even though they're in a relationship that they're not 100% happy with, they try to fix things. They try to do right by their partner. And even if you're reaching out to them in a friendly manner, like, you know, wishing them um, happy holidays, happy birthday, happy, you know, whatever event is happening in their lives. It just feels to me like they want to respond. They want to reciprocate. They want to reach out and see how you're doing and even reach out to reconnect with you. Um, but I feel there's an element here about them being stuck in another relationship. And so they're not really able to make that gesture towards you. And I feel it's because they have a big sense of responsibility to their current partner. They don't want to stray. They don't want, um, to like, um, connect and, 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 you know, have that temptation from their end. Okay. So they're very cognizant of that. And I feel like that might be why you're not really getting the communication you're hoping for, even though this person does care about you. And they do wonder, like, what would happen if they reconnect? What would happen if you guys never broke up? What would happen if they stuck around and really worked at the relationship when they were with you rather than jumping into this next relationship that is not really fulfilling their emotional needs? So I do see a lot of regrets from exes, people that you have dealt with that um, they're thinking about you and they're pining after that relationship. I'm also seeing new people coming into the picture. So for those who are single, um, I keep seeing this element about barking up the wrong tree, you know, um, being interested in people that have a lot of issues that they need to work through. So they're not ready to be a good relationship partner for you just yet. They have some inner conflict. They have things in their lives that they need to uh, clear up. They might be in debt. They might be in suspension about, you know, um, their work, their career, their finances. And I feel like they're not able to offer everything that you need and everything that you deserve. So for those who are single, if you're going through the motions and you're just, um, dating that's fine but in terms of finding like a solid relationship partner the people that you're dealing with seem to me with this ten of swords here they might have recently broken up and they're trying to you know uh, jump into a next relationship when they're not 100 percent ready okay so just be aware of that and screen people out early and you know just let them know gently you don't seem like you're ready just yet Whenever you're ready in the future, then you may contact me. But as of right now, I don't feel that you're ready and I don't need that additional stress in my life. Okay. Um, in the other department of your life, I feel like this, um, this energy about being stuck in a time capsule. And, um, I feel like it's really time for you to break free and to pursue new friendships, expand your social circle and connect with people that have a lot more to contribute to your friendships and your social circle and, um, connect to people that can really help you grow. Um, when I shuffled out this spread, what I feel like is high school drama. Okay. So some of you, you might be in the same vicinity where you are hanging out with people that you've gone to high school with, where you have like a really close knit circle of friends that, um, that you are still really, really connected to. And whenever you guys get together, it's like, you know, the same people. So it feels very familiar, but in terms of what else are we talking about in terms of like, this is what I'm doing with my life. Where are you guys at right now? I don't see a lot of commonalities. And I, I feel like you're going through the motions, connect, reconnecting with them. But it seems as if you have really progressed in your career, in your life. And so you might need to, you know, change your scenery, change your social circle, mix things up a little bit and expand outside of this, you know, time capsule and try to, you know, branch out and, and, and meet people that are a little bit more 
professionally where you are, emotionally where you are. And so I see like every time people get together, there's drama, there's gossip, there's like this back and forth. Remember, you know, such and such, look at who they're dating now. And it, I feel like it stirs up drama. And I also feel like it's, it's, it's almost a situation where everybody has dated the same people and everyone knows each other. You not only know each other's friends, but you know each other's exes, you know each other's um, significant other. So like you know each other. And so whenever you get together, the conversation is all about other people. And it really doesn't really add value to, you know, where you're at right now. And so I see you longing for a change in scenery. I see you longing and trying to figure out, you know, what else is out there? Is there more to life? Um, do I need to expand? Where can I find people that are like-minded? Where can I find people that can, you know, really help me expand my consciousness? So I see a lot of that in this spread. And they're really telling you as your spiritual advice, you know, don't go back to the past. Don't go back to this situation where it's it's all about like the the superficial communication. Aim to break away from it and aim to chart new territory and travel over new uh, horizons so that you can find people that are more in alignment with you. Okay, so break out of this time capsule, break out of this drama and break out with this space where everyone is all connected and knows each other and I feel like there is definitely familiarity in that but it can suck us back into you know memory lane it can also create a, a situation where we are comparing our lives currently where we're at with other people who might be who we might have grown up with and there's a sense of like competition here that is not entirely healthy um, this is something I want you to, you guys to keep in mind. And I feel like you've been wanting a change of scenery for quite some time. And I feel like many of you are kind of stepping out of it and trying to make some positive changes for yourself and to branch out, meet new people and things like that. But the people that come in, they also bring a lot of emotional baggage. And, you know, it's not your role to play therapist. They need to be able to take care of all of that by, by themselves rather than coming to you, leaning on you and, and expecting you to kind of like be that knight in shining armor to uh, save them from themselves. Okay. You guys are really, really good, solid friends. When um, one of your friends are down or when you're so, uh, someone in your social circle, they're not feeling at their best. You know how to be the cheerleader. You know how to take them out and show them a good time. And I just feel like people count on that. And so they come to you when there are problems and you kind of make their problems go away. But the point here is that make sure things are reciprocated and make sure when you talk to people, the conversation steers towards ideas, steers towards things that are inspiring, things that are expansive, rather than getting bogged down to let's talk about so and so, let's talk about this person, let's talk about who they're dating and and things that are very low vibrational, such as gossip and rumors, 